Hi, my name is Basti and this is LMB Fishing. On today's episode, I'll be showing you guys how to make a classic, a classic. I will be making a red and white wobbler out of this broomstick pole. Now, this type of rapala originated a long, long time ago. It comes in all shapes and sizes, some quite ugly, some quite weird, some pretty cool. You can see them here. You've got this chunky fellow, this chubby mouse, that thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what that is. But recent models will kind of look like this. The lure I'll be making today is a surface lure. This particular model, I don't want it to dive any depth. I just want it to stay at the surface. Because next week, I will be going sea bass fishing. This is the type of lure that you'll be wanting to cast down into some rough waters on the shore. I don't know, out to sea, I guess. Hard, fast actions kind of stimulates aggression with the fish. Compared to other rapalas, this one's quite simple. This lure normally takes around 30 to 40 minutes to make if you've got the equipment. To carve the broomstick, I'll be using this scalpel here, this small saw here, some varnish to make it waterproof, and these paint brushes to paint it. Stay tuned, I hope you guys enjoy and learn a few things about how to make this wobbler red and white wobbler red and white lure. Okay, well, the first thing you want to do is measure out the size of the rapala you want. Um, and in this case, I chose eight centimeters. So I measured it up with a ruler, and then I took the measurement with a pencil and just did a small mark there, just like that. So using your small saw, start to saw away at it. And I would advise you to do small backstrokes with your hand first, just to make sure you don't make any wrong moves. Chip the wood, and then get to business. Once you've got your lure body, like that, scrape away the sawdust, clean your surface up a bit, and then, using a pencil, you want to mark the head of the lure, with a small dot like that, and for the tail, across, just so I know. You then want to use this sandpaper here, and just take a small cutting of it like this. You don't have to use a ruler, but I just thought it would be a bit handy, and then cut using a scalpel. Just like this. Now, you just want to start chipping away at your lure head using your scalpel. Just take small chips, small chips that it like so. You want to carve it down until what you think is good enough to start sanding. In this case, I probably spend about three to four minutes doing this and then I begin to sand down, just like that. Then from then you can mark the tail and start doing the tail. This is similar to the head, however, you want the uh, strokes to be slightly longer. You want a greater graduation to make a nice smooth round tail. So just chip, chip away, and then you can begin to sand. That looks good. Now let's sand. So cut the sandpaper around the ear, like so, and grind almost like a, a pepper grinder. And I would probably spend a third of the amount of time sanding it down. Sanding is key for this, because it just gives it a really nice look and effect. And in between, if you're not happy, you can start chipping away again with the scalpel. There we go. Nice sanded tail and head. Happy with that. Okay, so clean your surface again, like so. Measure the head. 
using a pencil like that and now down to the paints so we're using acrylic paints today we're going to use this white acrylic here for the main body of the lure so that would be the behind and then you have the red paint here brilliant red and that would be the head just like that and we're going to use a yellow for the eye Now, if you are up to date with British politics, you'll know what I'm doing here. There goes Boris Johnson. Anyway, back to it. Just a bit of banter. So you want to take some tape here, some masking tape, rip it off like that, and place it around the head of the lure. You'll see why I'm going to do this. It's so when you paint the white paint first, it doesn't go into the section where I'll be painting the red. So just finish wrapping around the tape. And then with a nice paintbrush, just start doing some long, smooth strokes with the white paint along the body. Just like that. When you finish the first layer of white paint, finish up and then leave it to dry. I left it outside. And always wash your paintbrush after. Now into my tackle box. So you've got my small box here and down to choosing the hooks. I've got the feathered hook, feathered treble hook for the back, another treble hook for the front. You can then paint the second layer of white paint and take the tape off like that. You see what I mean? It prevents the paint from overlapping. I'll do the same and put tape around the white section so you're about to paint the red head with this paint here and start dabbing away with small smooth strokes. And you can be as messy as you want just as long as you don't get the paint past the masking tape. You then peel this away and you should have quite a nice finish like so pretty cool eh? in between I would leave it to dry but yeah okay so now to the eyes mark two dots where you're going to put the eyes and dab with the yellow paint do this bit quite carefully you don't want to muck up just like that and another one now with a sharpie to get precise pupil marks, dab quite gently within the center of the eye just to give it a nice effect. And again like that, you can see both eyes, looks quite cool. Now we're going to use these eye screws here to make the hook hangers. So I'll place two of these into the body of the lure a treble hook dangling from each one and then these split rings here I'll put one right in the back like so so just make a small indentation and then you can start winding it like that and then if you really want to make it tight which I did you can use a good pair of pliers so like that now for the second one you make a mark there and again to make an indentation and there we have it two hook hangers now for the front one I'm going to have a slightly larger one and again just because it like so like that and now we're going to use this varnish here this will ensure it will be waterproof and it will prevent scratching and so on so just spray a bit I did two layers in this case just giving a nice shiny effect like that. Now to put on the treble hooks. There's one and the other. And there you have it. Pretty cool what you can do from a broomstick pole. So guys. There you have it. Here's your red and white. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. Looks quite nice. The varnish gave it a nice finish. 
a nice feathered treble look at the back. Yellow eye. Cool. I like it. If you want to see this repellent action, subscribe to the channel. If you've already subscribed, stay tuned for next week's episode, as I will be going fishing with this here. Subscribe.